What's up guys, in today's Excalibur Obsidian tutorial, I will show you how to install and use the Excalibur plugin on your Obsidian app. So, to get started, it is important to notice that by default the Excalibur plugin isn't actually installed on Obsidian, so we will have to first install it. To do so, head over to the gear icon right here on the bottom left to open up the settings and then head over to community plugins right here. We will have to first of all actually turn this on and then we can actually browse the community plugins. Now we will either just see Excalibur right here or we can also simply just uh, basically uh, search for it by using this function right here and we can then find it. Then make sure to just install it and this is then going to take a couple of seconds and now this is going to be installed and now we will just we will just have to enable it essentially. So now that it is enabled we can actually opt out of this and let's actually now create a new folder and I'm just going to name this Excalibur and we can now create a new Excalibur node in this folder by simply just selecting it and by then using this button right here this is basically to create a new drawing and now this has been created and now we have opened up Excalibur basically. So right here we can then use all sorts of different elements on top, we can see them right here. We can for example use a square and by the way when dragging these elements around if you are going to hold down shift this is basically going to make a nice even element. This is also going to work for the circle right here. We can actually also just basically you select the A tool right here, the text tool, and we can then click on each of these elements to basically add a text onto it. So just click on A right here, and then you can just add a text onto this. Additionally, you can simply just use T on your keyboard to right away enable the text tool right here. And you can then once again do that, and you can then once again add that. So what we can also do, we can also simply just select these and we can then change the color right here on the bottom left and basically the general styling. So we can change the stroke color, we can change the background. So if you do want to make this a color, we can do so. We can then change the fill right here or we can actually also change the stroke width if we do want to as well as the actual stroke style. Now this is basically just going to come down to your own preferences. We can then actually also change the sloppiness. So if you just want to have a round even circle, we can also select that right here. As for opacity, we can also change that and we can even play around with the layers. So if we are going to have this right here, we can for example put it one layer down and now this is going to be under this exact uh, square right here. And when selecting the square, we can then actually also go over all of the settings right here. As you can see, as we've actually added the text onto the square, we are now going to get all, all sorts of different other options like the font family. So we can basically change this. We are going to have some default ones, however, we can actually also use any of these right here. I'm just going to stick with the default one right here. We can change the font size, we can change the text alignment, as well as the actual opacity of this once again. And one thing which I also really like is that right here, you are basically going to have some quick actions. Like for example, you can easily duplicate it, you can delete it, or you can actually also group the selection and you can create a link onto this. So if you guys do want to, for example, make this clickable, you can do so by using this function right here. Now let's get back to the square. As you can see right here, we are also going to have the same exact actions for this square right here. We can now actually reword all of the changes. We can actually also duplicate it by using this function right here and we can also delete it by using this. Additionally, we can change the canvas background right here. So we can either use any of the pre-made canvas background options or by clicking on here, we can then also upload our own custom hex code to basically even further customize this. But in my case, I'm just going to leave it at the white option. We can then also toggle the tray mode this is basically just going to be so that whenever we are going to select an element, all of the settings are going to show up on the left right away. And um, now I personally do actually prefer this over the other options. So I'm just going to leave it at that right now. So we can then actually also go over some other options like the script library, export image, open as markdown, but generally speaking, these aren't really important. So we now went over the square. Uh, also this one as well as the circle. Now actually these arrows right here are also super powerful. You can just basically drag them onto each of the elements and these are then automatically going to realign. You can then actually also select the arrow, you can change the color, brush stroke once again, you can change the sloppiness and you can actually also change the arrow type. So if you do like this one right here, 
uh, you can select it. I usually do prefer the one where you can put, put these kind of um, wiggle effect, I guess. Um, I like, I think these are actually the best ones in terms of looks. So I'm just going to leave it at that right now. We can actually also just create a normal straightforward line. And by the way, by once again holding down shift, we can create these perfect lines right here. This almost works for any element out there. Um, you can, for example, also use the arrow thing right here. By holding down shift, you can then actually also create a nice looking arrow, which doesn't look like something like this, okay? So additionally, right here on the draw, we can then actually draw something onto our image, essentially onto our canvas. So we can once again change the fill animation right here. So if you do want to change this, I don't know, we can change this. Generally speaking, the only settings that you probably will have to change on the stroke option right here would be the color stroke width as well as the opacity so for example i'm just going to leave the opacity at 100 but as you can see now with this stroke width we can create better looking um, strokes essentially these are going to look nicer than just these big strokes right here and as we have set the background as green, if we are now going to make this a circle, this is going to have a green background. However, I'm going to actually just make this transparent so that this doesn't show up as I think it isn't really useful. Then as for the text options, we basically already went over this. We can put all sorts of different text in right here. We can change the font family, font size, as well as the text alignment and the general opacity of our text. So one thing which we can then also do is we can actually add images onto our canvas. So let me show you this. I've now, for example, added a thumbnail from one of my previous videos. And as you can see, now this is going to show up like this and we can actually use this. We can actually also make the edges rounded if we do want to. I think this does actually look pretty good. So I'm just going to leave it at that. We can then actually also once again change the layers and a lot more. Now, if you do want to delete certain elements, you can either select them and then simply just press down delete on your keyboard, or you can also use the eraser tool right here to simply just erase certain kind of elements which you don't want to, which you don't want to have essentially. Under AI right here, we are then also going to get quite a lot of other great options. We can, for example, create a frame right here. If we do want to, this can be used to basically just sub, basically to just subdivide all sorts of different elements. You can then drag them around by simply just selecting the frame right here and additionally you can actually also use stuff like web embed or you can for example use the laser pointer right here and this is then going to have this kind of thing right here with which is only going to be visible for a short amount of time which actually is also super useful when you're for example presenting something and if you do want to say for example okay right here we covered Clavio this is a tutorial for beginners and this is about email marketing you can use this to basically explain stuff Additionally, we then also do have the text to diagram thing right here. So we can actually um, use this to put in all sorts of different text. And this is then going to create a diagram. So if you do want to do that, you will just have to put in your prompt right here. However, if I'm not mistaken, you will actually have to connect your OpenAI account. And we then also do have the wireframe to code option right here, which you can use to basically generate code using a wireframe, which is also super useful. But once again, you will have to connect your OpenAI API key in the plugin settings to actually do this right here. Now that's basically it as for today's tutorial. If you guys do have any more questions, please leave them down below and I would be more than happy to actually answer them. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.